Good afternoon, Cloud community, and welcome back to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We are here at AWS reInvent, day four of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage. It is, it is day four in the afternoon, and we are holding strong. I'm Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host, Paul Gillen. Paul, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Savannah. You, you look great. We're in the home like, stretch here. Yeah, we are. You, you in the still home look stretch. fresh as a daisy. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> You're too kind, you're too kind. <laughs> I'm vain enough to take that compliment. I'm very excited about the conversation that we're going to have up next. We get to get a little DevRel and we got a little swagger on the stage. Welcome, Austin, how you doing? Hey, great to be here, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. How's the show been for you so far? Busy, exciting, feels a lot like, you know, it used to be, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, a little, little reminiscent little of the before times. Before times. Before we dig into the technical stuff, you're the most intriguingly dressed person we've had on the show this week. I feel extremely underdressed. Well, so, and we no, were talking turban, about the turban, developer yeah. fancy. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about your approach to fashion. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to lead with this, but I no, like this actually. No, good my PR people are going to love it. Um, <laughs> my approach, here's the thing. I will give, I, I give free advice all the time about developer relations, about you know things that work have worked and don't work, and community and all that stuff, and I love talking about that. The, Someone came up to me and said, it's like, where do you get your fashion tips from? What's what's the secret Discord server that I need to go on? I'm like, I will never tell. Oh, okay. This is, this is an actual trade Top secret. secret. Wow, talk Look, about. If talk someone about. else starts wearing the hat, then everyone's going to be like, there's so many white guys in tech. So Look, I'm a white guy with a beard that works in technology. I've never met one of those. <laughs> exactly, there's none of them at all. So you have to, you have to do something to kind of stand out from the crowd a little bit. I, I love it, and it's a talk trigger. We're talking about it, We're now. About it now. The yeah. production team loved Ice, it. It's fantastic. Icebreaker, it's great. So your DevRel for Lightstep. Yep. In case the audience isn't familiar, tell us about Lightstep. So Lightstep is a cloud-native observability platform built for pl at planet scale, for, and it powers observability at some places you've heard of, like Spotify, GitHub, right? And we're designed to really help developers that are working in the cloud with Kubernetes, with you know, these huge distributed systems, understand application performance and being able to you know, find problems, fix problems. Uh, we're also part of the ServiceNow family, and as we all know, ServiceNow is on a mission to help the world of work work better by powering digital transformation around IT and uh, customer experiences for their many, many, many uh, Global 2000 customers, and we love them very much. I, you know, it's a big love fest here. A lot of people have talked about the collaboration. So many companies working together. You mentioned unified observability. What is unified observability? So, if you think about a tradition, or if you've heard about this traditional idea of observability where you have three pillars, right? You have mm -hmm. metrics, and you have logs, and you have traces, and all those three things are different data sources. They're picked up by different tools. They're analyzed by different people for different purposes. And what we believe, and what we're working to do, accomplish right now, is to take all that and if you think of them as pillars, flip them on their side. And think of them as streams of data. And if we can take those streams and integrate them together and let you treat traces and metrics and logs not as these kind of inviolate experiences where you're kind of paging between things and going between tab A to tab B to tab C mm -hmm. and give you a standard way to query this, a standard way to display this, um, and letting you kind of find the most relevant data, then it really unlocks a lot of a power for like developers and SREs to spend less time like managing tools, you know, figuring out where to build their query or what dashboard to check, and more just being able to like kind of ask a question, get an answer. And when you have an incident or an outage, that's the most important thing, right? How quickly can you get those answers that you need so that you can restore system health? And you don't want to be looking in multiple spots to figure out what's going on. Absolutely. I mean, some people hear unified observability and they go to like tool consolidation, right? And that's something I hear from a lot of our users and a lot of people just at reInvent. You know, I'll talk to SREs who are like, yeah, we've got like six or seven different metrics products alone, just on services that they cover. And it is important to kind of consolidate that, but we're really taking it a step lower and we're looking at the data layer and trying to say, yeah. okay, if the data is all um, consistent and vendor neutral, then that gives you flexibility, not only from a tool consolidation perspective, but also you know, a consistency, um, reliability. You could have a single way to deploy your observability out, depend, regardless of what cloud you're on, regardless if you're using Kubernetes or Fargate or, or whatever else, or even just you know, bare metal um, or EC2 bare metal, right? Yeah. There's been so much, historically in this space, there's been a lot of silos. And we think that unified exactly. observability means that we, we kind of break down those silos, right? Uh, the way that we're doing that primarily is through a project called OpenTelemetry, which you might have heard of. Mm -hmm. um, 
You want to talk about that a minute? Yeah, let's yeah. let's talk about it right now. Why don't you tell us about it? Keep so, going. You're open. great. <laughs> You're on a roll. I am. Just vamping. <laughs> we'll just hang out over here. You it's day you four. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. I can ask the questions and answer the questions. <laughs> You're great. I do do well, yeah. open telemetry. So open, open telemetry. Yeah, explain yeah. what open telemetry is first. Open telemetry is a CNCF project, um, mm -hmm. Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and the goal is to make telemetry data, high quality telemetry data, a built-in feature of uh, cloud native software. Right. So right now, if you wanted to get logging data out, you know, depending on your application stack, depending on your application runtime, depending on language, depending on your deployment environment, even. You might have a lot, you have to make a lot of choices, right? About like, what am I going to use? Uh, so many different choices, and the players are changing all the time. Exactly. And a lot of times what people will do is they'll go and they'll say like, well, we're, we have to use this commercial solution because they have a proprietary agent that can do a lot of this for us. You know, and if you look at all those proprietary agents, what you find very quickly is it's very commodified, right? Mm -hmm. There's no real difference in what they're doing at a code level and the, what's stopped the industry from really adopting a standard way to create this, you know, logs and metrics and traces is simply just the fact that there was no standard. And yeah. so, open telemetry is that standard, right? We've got dozens of companies, many of them like very, you know, many of them here, right? Uh, competitors all the same, working together to build this open standard and implementation of telemetry data for cloud native software and really any software, right? Like we support over 12 languages, we support, you know, Kubernetes, um, Amazon AWS is a huge contributor actually, and we're doing some really exciting stuff with them on their Amazon distribution of open telemetry. So it's been extremely interesting to see it over the past like couple years go from like, hey, here's this like new thing that we're doing over here to uh, really is a generalized acceptance that yeah, this is the way of the future. This is what we should have been doing all along. Yeah. I, my opinion is there is a perception out there that uh, observability is kind of a commodity now, that all of the players have the same set of tools, same set of 15 or 17 or whatever tools, and that there's very little distinction between in, in functionality. Would you agree with that? I don't know if I would characterize it that way entirely. I do think that there's a lot of duplicated effort that happens, and part of the reason is because of this, <clears throat> you know, telemetry data problem, right? Because you have to wind up, you know, there's this idea of table stakes monitoring that we talk about, right? Table stakes monitoring is the stuff that you're having to do every single day to kind of make sure your system is healthy, you know, to be able to, mm -hmm. when there's an alert gets triggered, to see why it got triggered and to go fix it, right? And because everyone has to kind of work on that table stake stuff and then build all these integrations, there's very little time for innovation on top of that, right? Because you're spending all your time just like working on keeping up with technology. Right. Doing yeah. the boring stuff to make sure the wheels don't fall off. Right. Basically. Yeah. What I think the real advantage of open telemetry is, is that it really, from like a vendor perspective, like it unblocks us from having to kind of do all this repetitive commodified work. It lets us help move that out to the community level so that, you know, Instead of having to kind of build your Kubernetes integration, for example, you can just have like, hey, open telemetry is integrated into Kubernetes and you just have this data now. And if you are a commercial product or if you're even someone that's you know, interested in fixing a, a scratching that little, a particular itch, right, about observability. And it's like, I, wanna, I have this specific way that I'm doing Kubernetes and I need something to help me really analyze that data. Well, I've got the data now, I can just go create a project. You know, I can create an, an analysis tool. And I think that's what you'll see over time as open telemetry promulgates out into the ecosystem is more comp you know more people building interesting analysis features people you know using things like machine learning to analyze this large amount of open, you know large and consistent amount of open telemetry data it's it's going to be a big shakeup i think um, but it has the potential to really unlock a lot of value for our customers well so you're a, you're a developer relations guy what are developers asking for right now out of their out of their observability platforms? It's a great question. I think there's two things. Uh, the first is that they want it to just work. It's actually the biggest thing, right? There's so many kind of, uh, this goes back to the tool proliferation, right? People have too much data in too many different places, yep. and getting that data out can still be really challenging. And so the biggest thing they want is just like, I want something that I can, I want a lot of these questions I have to ask answered already and open telemetry is going towards it. You know, keep in mind, it's, the project's only three years old, so we obviously have room to grow, but it, there are people running it in production and it works uh, 
you know, really well for them. But there's more that we can do. The second thing is, and this is in, what really is interesting to me is, it's less what they're asking for and more what they're not asking for. Because a lot of the stuff that you see people, you know, saying around, oh, we need this like very specific sort of lower level telemetry data, or we, we need this kind of universal thing. People really just want to be able to get questions or get questions answered, right? Yeah. They want uh, tools that kind of have these workflows where you don't have to be an expert. Because a lot of times this tooling gets locked behind sort of, it is gate kept almost in a organization where there are teams that's like, we're responsible for this and we're going to set it up and manage it for you and we won't let you do things outside of it because that would mess up, you know, how- Here's your sandbox. And right, this yeah. is your sandbox you can play in. And a lot of times that's really useful and very tuned for, you know, the problems that you saw yesterday, but people are looking at like, what are the problems I'm going to get tomorrow, right? We're deploying more rapidly. We have more and more intentional change happening in the system. Like, it's not enough to have this reactive sort of approach where our SRE teams are kind of like, you know, or this observability team is building a platform for us. Developers want to be able to get in and have these kind of guided workflows, really, that say like, hey, here's where you're starting at, let's get you to an answer, let's help you find the needle in the haystack, as it were, without you having to become a ma master of six different or seven different tools. Right, and it shouldn't be that complicated. It shouldn't be. Um, I mean, we've certainly, you know, we've been working on this problem for many years now, um, starting with a lot of our team that started at Google and helped build Google's, you know, planet scale monitoring systems. So, we have a lot of experience in the field, and. It's actually an interesting story that our, our founder, or now general manager, tells BHS, Ben Siegelman. And he told me this story once, and it's like, he had built this really cool thing called uh, Dapper, that was a tracing system at Google. And people weren't using it, because they were like, this is really cool, but I don't know how to, it's just, but it's not relevant to me, right? And he's like, the one thing that we did to get to increase usage 20 times over, was we just put a link. So we went to the place that people were already looking for that data and we added a link that says, hey, go over here and look at this, right? And it's those simple connections, being able to kind of draw people from like point A to point B, take them from familiar workflows into unfamiliar ones. You know, that's how we think about these problems, right? How is this becoming a daily part of someone's usage? How is this helping them yeah. you know, solve problems faster and really improve their, their life? Yeah, exactly, it comes down to quality of life. Uh, Werner Vogels made the case this morning that, uh, that uh, Computer architecture should be inherently event-driven, mm. uh, and that we are moving toward a, a world where the person matters less than what the software does. Right, the software is triggering events. Mm. Does this uh, complicate observability or simplify it? I think that at the end of the day, it's about getting the observability. To me, in a lot of ways, is about modeling your system. Right, it's about you as a developer being able to say, "This is what I expect the system to do," and I don't think the actual application architecture um, really matters that much, right? Because it's about you, you are building a system, right? It can be event driven, it can be you know, support request response, it can be whatever it is. You have to be able to say, this is what I expect to have. For these given inputs, this is the expected output. Now maybe there's a lot of stuff that happens in the middle that you don't really care about. And then I talk to people here and everyone's talking about serverless, right? Everyone, you, know, right. you can see, there's obviously some amazing statistics about how many people are using Lambda. And right. it's very exciting. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you shouldn't have to care about as a developer, but you should care about those inputs and outputs. And you will need to have that kind of intermediate information and understand like what was the exact you know, path that I took through this invented system? What was the actual resources that were being used? Because even if you trust that all of this magic behind the scenes is just going to work forever, um, Sometimes it's still really useful to have that sort of lower level abstraction to say like, well, this is what actually happened so that I can figure out like when I deployed a new change, did I make performance better or worse? Mm -hmm. Or being able to kind of segregate your data out and say like, hey, doing A-B testing, right? Doing canary releases, doing all of these things that you hear about as best practices or well-architected applications. You know, observability is at the core of all that. You need observability to kind of do any of the, ask any of those higher level interesting questions. We are here at reInvent. Tell us a little bit more about the partnership with AWS. So, I would have to actually probably refer you to someone at Service now on that. I know that we you know, are a partner, we collaborate with them on various things, but 
really at Lightstep, we're very focused on kind of the open source part of this. So we work yeah. with AWS through the Open Telemetry Project um, mm -hmm. on things like the AWS distribution for Open Telemetry, uh, which is really it's Open Telemetry again is really designed to be like a neutral standard. But we know that there are going to be integrators and implementers that need to package up and bundle it in a certain way, right? To make right. it easy for their end users to consume it. So that's what Amazon has done with uh, ADOT, which is the short name for it. So it's available in several different ways. You can use it as like an SDK and drop it into your application. There's a Lambda layers. If you want to get Lambda observability, you just add this extension in and then suddenly you're getting open telemetry data on the other side. So it's really cool. It's been a really exciting to kind of work with people on the AWS side um, over the past it several years. Exciting. And I've personally seen just a, a lot of change. And I was talking to a PM earlier this week. You know, it's like, hey, two years ago I came and talked to you about open telemetry, and you know, here we are today, still talking about open telemetry. And they're like, what changed is our customers have started coming to us asking for open telemetry. And we see the same thing now. The timing pretty is right. The timing is right, but we see the same thing, you know, even talking to ServiceNow customers who are, you know, these very big enterprises, banks, finance, healthcare, whatever, telcos. You know, it used to be you'd have, you'd have to go to them and say like, let me tell you about distributed tracing, let me tell you about open telemetry, let me tell you about observability. Now they're coming in and saying, yeah, so we're standard, you know, if you think about Kubernetes and how Kubernetes, a lot of enterprises have spent the past five, six years standardizing on Kubernetes as a way to deploy applications or manage containerized applications. They're doing the same journey now with open telemetry where they're saying, this is what we're betting on and we want partners, we want people to help us um, go along that way. I love it, and they work hand in hand, all CNCF projects as well that you're talking about. Right, so we're, yeah, we're Keep integrated into Kubernetes, where you can find open telemetry and things like um, Kepton, which is application standards, and over the over time, it'll just like promulgate out from there, so it's a really yeah. exciting time. A bunch of uh, CNCF projects in this area, right? Prometheus? Um, Prometheus? Yeah. Yeah, so we interoperate with Prometheus as well, so if you have Prometheus metrics, then open telemetry can read those. Uh, it's a, Open telemetry metrics are like a superset of Prometheus. We've been working with the Prometheus community for quite a while to make sure that there's really good compatibility because so many people use Prometheus, you know? Yeah, all right, so last question. New tradition for us here on theCUBE. Shoot. We're looking for your 30 second hot take, Instagram reel, biggest theme, biggest buzz for those not here on the show floor. Oh gosh. And it could be for you too, it could be whatever. For me too. Yeah. I, I think the two things that are really striking to me is one, serverless, like I've seen, I thought, People were talking about service a lot and they're talking about it more than ever. And two, I really think it is observability, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've gone from observability being kind of a niche <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, <huh? laughs> Not that you're biased. Not that I'm biased, no, <laughs> it used to be a niche. I'd have to go, you know, niche thing where I would go and explain what this is to people and now, yeah. you know, people are coming up, it's like, yeah, yeah, we're using open telemetry, we're using open telemetry. And it's very cool, I've, it's a pro, you know, I've been involved with open telemetry since the jump, since uh, 20, since it was started really. And it's been very exciting to see and gratifying to see like how much adoption we've gotten even in a short amount of time. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a pretty uh, yeah. It's been a lot. That was great. Perfect perfect sound bite for us. Thanks. I love sound bites. Yeah. <laughs> Austin, we love your hat and your sound bites equally. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being on the show with us today. Thank and you for having me. Hey, anytime. Anytime. Will we, will we see you in Amsterdam? Speaking yes. of the KubeCon. Yes. Awesome. We'll oh. be there. So we'll and there's some real exciting open telemetry stuff coming up for KubeCon, so Ooh, well, we'll have to get you back put on, it on the, the schedule. schedule. Heard it I here love first. That for us. Thank you all for tuning in to, the, to our wall-to-wall -wall coverage here, day four at AWS reInvent in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. With Paul Gillen, I'm Savannah Peterson, and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage.